What's up guys and girls, it is your boy The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to the Epi Banger video. And today guys and girls, I'm gonna tell you about my top three knots, whether you're ultra light or BFS fishing. Let's get right into it. First cast, dude. Holy crap, guys. Check that out. That is awesome. Very first cast. It's actually kind of sick. There we go. First fish. All right, guys and girls, as you heard from the intro, I'm gonna be telling you all about what my absolute favorite knots are for ultralight and BFS fishing. Now, these don't really pertain to just ultralight and BFS fishing. The reason why I'm saying that is because these knots are a general purpose knots. I use these knots no matter whether I'm using 60 pound monofilament or six pound monofilament. So I guarantee you these knots will be useful for you to know in absolutely any situation. Now, these knots are primarily meant to, I actually have reasons why I use each of these individual knots. I have these preferences when I use these knots. I'm going to be telling you all about that in today's video. And if you have any questions down below, make sure you guys leave a comment. And as usual, if you want to see any more informative videos like this, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing with the bell notifications turned on so you know the next time that I drop something that you might want to know. And without further ado, let me introduce you guys to the three knots that I'm actually really talking about. Number one, we have the improved uni knot. I believe this improved uni knot, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people I think also refer to this as the fisherman's knot. I wouldn't really call this a fisherman one's not because of the fact I think that's too general of a term I've heard people refer to like 30 different knots as a fisherman's knot like it doesn't make sense to call everything a fisherman's knot when there's 80 different knots in the world that you could use to do the same thing for a fisherman and without further ado with this improved uni knot the reason why I'd use it specifically is actually when I'm using monofilament or fluorocarbon uh, and I don't want my lure to be slipping at all so say if I'm using a spinnerbait or a small beetle spin and I don't really I'm not really worried about action as much but rather keeping the knot tied to the lure consistently. This knot does not move as much as other knots do. This knot is actually tightening on itself because of the way it's actually tied. And this knot is really useful for, like I said, beetle spins and spinner baits and knots and lures like that. If you're using this knot, I would highly recommend just being careful and making sure that you wet the line as you use it. But without further ado, let me show you how to tie it. All right, guys, we have what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do the improved uni knot first. So. I've got some 50 pound neon orange braid and what we're going to do is we're going to take this orange and we're just going to loop it through this jig eye really quick. So what we do is just take that, pull it through and now that we have it through what we're going to do to do the uni knot is you take it, grab both parts of the line, make a loop that goes around to where it lines up with both lines you see here. And then we, what we do is I like to do seven typically. I'm using lighter line. So I like to do seven because it's the number of completion. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'll mess that up just a tad, but get the gist of it. It tightens out whenever you mess it up like that a little bit, but see there? We now have it tightened down and all you gotta do is just cut this tag and I like to leave a little bit of the tag in just like this much, about this much. I don't know why, it's just out of habit to leave a little tag in. So we're gonna do that. This is actually the Little Jack uh, Butterfly Fishing Tool. Uh, it's actually available at Bait Finesse Empire, not right now because it's sold out like immediately. So, but there we go and there is our completed uni knot. Sweet. All right, guys, that was the improved uni knot. If you have any questions about it, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Now for the next knot. My next knot for ultralight or BFS fishing is going to be the Palomar knot. Palomar knot is a specific knot that I only like to use when I'm using straight braid. Now in ultralight and BFS fishing, I rarely ever use straight braid, but I do, I definitely do. This is what I like to use when I'm tying a jig straight to braid. The reason why I might do that sometimes is because I'm lazy. I don't feel like tying a leader. <laughs> in my honest opinion, that's the reason why I might do it. So I highly recommend in this knot if you're wanting to have a more consistent connection to the lure. So the Palomar knot is, uh, I was always told it was the world's strongest knot. That's what my father told me. I don't know if that's the truth. I've been told my whole life it's the world's strongest knot. I'm not going to call it the world's strongest knot because I don't know if it truly is. And I'm not going to test it for a video because I don't have anything to test that with. Uh, so without further ado, you guys want to see how to tie it? Let's go. All right, guys, 
let's get ready to do the Palomar knot. Now this is a knot I would actually use with this braid, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do the Palomar knot. I used to do Palomar knot, I used to start two different ways. I'd either fold my line in half, or what I do now, because sometimes it's not as hard to do, is uh, first I take it through the jig eye, and then I hold my line down. See how I'm holding it down? And I go back through the way I came, but you have to make sure you're going in the same end. You can't like just make an overhand through the jig hook, jig eye. So now we've had our line double over, and now we have the tag end towards the main line. And all you do is you grab this loop right here first, which by the way, guys, if you wanna have more area to work with, just grab this tag end, put your finger in this loop, and now you can actually give yourself more tag end to work with, just like I'm doing here. So. Now, let's make sure we grab both tag in and the main line, take the loop, and just do a simple overhand. So what you do is you just go over your main and tag end and go through that loop you just created. And all you do is just tighten it down all the way. And what you do is you take the loop that you just created, grab your lure or anything that you're using, and just pull it through that loop. And bada bing, bada boom. You just tighten it down. If you're using braid, I usually recommend whitening the whitening, moistening the knot, and boom, we now have a completed Palomar knot. On to the next one. All right, guys, that was how you tie the Palomar knot. If you guys have any certain questions about the Palomar knot, please leave a comment section down below. And just a, a quick little reminder for the video: if you guys haven't already, please leave a subscribe uh, because it really helps me out to make more videos like this. And if you guys enjoy content like this, I'll keep making content like this. And if you guys enjoy seeing tutorial and formative content, I love to know. So, without further ado, let's talk about knot number three. This knot I like to call the weedless loop knot. I don't know where I actually learned this not but I learned it I want to say a couple years ago now when I was really starting to get into this saltwater world so I live in Florida there's a lot of grass even our salt water I heard about the loop knot and how that is essentially the best knot you can tie on any lure in general the reason why is because it actually helps with the action so the way that it works specifically is this actually has a loop knot tied on and essentially I'm just using the line to make this jump around. Because of the fact this knot is so free swinging, you get more bites because you have more action in the lure. And that might be important for you in a pressured fishery. So I'm gonna use this knot mainly with nylon or fluorocarbon based lines, uh, or monofilament, my bad. And whenever I'm trying to get more action out of my swim baits, uh, jigs, or anything. It also is very helpful when you're float fishing because it, essentially the reason why it's helpful when you're float fishing is instead of it hanging like this to your knot, now it's gonna be hanging and sitting in the horizontally in the water column. That's important whenever you're fishing under a float. So if you guys wanna learn how to use that knot and how to tie that knot, let's go. All right guys, so here's how you do the, what I like to call a weedless loop knot. So start the weedless loop knot, take your line, don't worry about your lure right now, take your line and make it go over itself and create what's called an overhand knot. Most of the time I'll be doing with this mono, mono, uh, mono or fluorocarbon, but I'm doing with braid right now so you guys can see really well. But here you go. Just make that quick overhand knot, and then you take your jig, and you put it through the tag end. And what you gotta do, so if you guys can see, this loop is actually going, has one way where it's on one side of the circle and one way where it's underneath. You gotta make sure that whenever you go back through that loop with this line, you've gotta go where it's coming down. Where the same way, same direction it came out, you gotta go back in whenever you try to do this part. So now we go up, which by the way guys, I believe I'm gonna be editing in steps on the screen that you guys can actually just watch too. And what you do is you pull it tight. A lot of people like to take it down to the jig eye, but because I'm using braid, that's gonna be a little bit more dangerous. So what we're gonna do is actually just hold on to it right there, hold on to the loop and do as many rotations as you feel comfortable with. My go-to is six or seven with ultra light. So I think we just did six or seven there. And another time, we have to make sure we pay attention to which side of the loop we do it in. Same direction it's coming out, we want to exactly go back that same way. That's what makes the weedless part. So wherever it's opening, essentially, you wanna go in the same way. So here, we're gonna go through that loop. Just gotta make sure you go through that, kind of that triangle you created and just pull it tight. And boom, you have your loop knot. It's not tightened all the way because it's braid. There we go. But 
if you want to be able to gauge how much loop you want, you can actually pull more this way or pull more this way and you'll be able to gauge how big your loop is going to be. So, but yeah, there we go, a loop knot. See how much action that has? It's great for fishing vertically, especially too. Like this off a pier, fantastic. All right guys, that was how you tie what I call the weedless loop knot. The reason why it's weedless is if you guys notice, I actually cut the tag in to make it stick out less essentially. And it essentially grass was more likely to slide off of it. It's not super weedless. It's not 100% weedless because nothing really is. It's a lure going through grass. But the point is, is the fact that it's meant to be less snaggy going through grass. And that is essentially what I, the reason why I call it the weedless loop knot. I really don't know why I learned it. I, <laughs> if you guys want my own opinion and giving credit to these people, I have no freaking clue. I have absolutely no clue where I learned these knots. So without further ado, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial video, if you guys want to see more content like this, please drop a like on this video and let me know what your favorite knot was. Out of this video and if you guys want to have any more tutorials come your way let me know what you think i should do down in the comments if you guys want to check out any of the gear that i use in today's video as always in the description below and if you guys have any questions please let me know if you guys haven't already follow me on instagram at the.hunterfisher if you haven't already and uh without further ado i want to say thank you guys for watching and as always guys remember fish fear me. Ready?